What's up guys and welcome back to Dawn of Man episode number 12. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics and that is unbanking the banked. Yes, you heard that right, we're unbanking the banked, we're not banking the unbanked. The reason being is because in the future it's more than likely going to be the end of banking as we know it. Where we no longer have these big institutions that run our societies and lives, but much rather we on our own, everybody themselves is a bank of their own that can manage their own financials. And the reason I bring it up is because banking is more than likely going towards a future that is both decentralized in the way that we have cryptocurrencies, but also with a lot more autonomy towards the individual. And some of you might say, look, stuff like cryptocurrency is never gonna happen. It's not gonna have you know, major like implementation but let's just go quickly through the history of finance in a very quick way, right? So way, way, way back when, finance actually started as debt. Before there were any you know, exchanges, before there was that, before we used like gold, any of that, we always had ledgers of you know, who owes who what. And then with things like for some collectibles come up, whether it's feathers or rare stones, there were always some kind of things that we could use for exchange. Then along came gold, and funny enough, then things took off very, very fast. In fact, it was during the age, if you're living in the United States, of your great-grandparents more than likely, maybe your great-great-grandparents, when paper money was first introduced. It was first introduced roughly in the late 19th century, which is about 1880. So it hasn't even been more than like 140 years since paper money came around. And in fact, it wasn't until your grandparents when the first plastic money was introduced. In 1959, American Express created the first plastic credit card. You see, that is not that long ago. That is 59 years ago only when plastic was first used. And then in fact, it was your parents most likely that used online banking for the first time. We went from something as you know, you know, tangible as like gold to paper being printed during your great grandparents to plastic during your grandparents, to then all of a sudden went to digital numbers across the screen during your parents' age. And now we're taking that final step, the next step, not final step, but definitely the next step towards cryptocurrency, such as Bitcoin, for example, where not only is it digital, but we're also removing it from a central power, such as the Fed, for example. You see, we might think that these financial institutions that we live under are indestructible, that they've always been around and so on. You know, my grandfather was born around the same time as the Federal Reserve was created. It's not even three generations old. And in fact, a lot of the institutions where we might think, you know what, Felix, you know, stuff like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, they, they can never fail. They, they, you know, too big to fail, as we like to say. But I want to remind you, in the last decade alone, some of the biggest financial institutions that America has known have either fallen apart or been acquired. Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, or actually the first bank that I personally used when I first moved to America, Bacovia. Bacovia was also the brink of failure, but it was purchased by Wells Fargo. So all these big banks with over a hundred years of existence, of experience, older than the Federal Reserve itself, failed. How is that possible when we think that these banks are like this trustworthy bastion that we give our money to thinking that it's safe there, that they take good care? Well, the fact is, they're not, they're not taking care of your money. In fact, they're over leveraging it. But again, this is a whole different conversation that you know I don't want to go too deep in. So I'm going to leave a, an article in the description below where you can get some of my takes on where I think you know the dollar is going. And in fact, you know the title of the dollar, uh, the title of the article, as I call it, the why the dollar is a fraud. So you can get an idea of you know where I stand on the subject. But regardless, the way the future is going is that we have the next phase coming up and banks are not part of the future. So what does a post bank world look like? Well, here's one vision. Now imagine, imagine you're going to Starbucks, you know, you're getting your frappe latte, whatever, and you're about to check out. And you know, instead of pulling out the credit card that you're gonna you know, push in with a chip, or maybe like the dollars that you're counting and you're going through the spare change that you have. What if you just scan your finger and then on your network, you know, with AR, you see it pop up, hey, there's a transaction that's coming through. And you can approve it. You can approve it with your thoughts. Either with your thoughts, maybe you tip it and you approve it. 
and then you see, hey, you know, your, your bank balance decline. That's it. Take a cup of coffee and you go about your day. How simple would that be? Well, you don't need to carry around a wallet, but much rather the wallet is hardwired into your biology where the wallet is part of, you know, we have the biometrics, whether it's finger, perhaps for bigger transaction, it needs to scan your eyes for really big transaction. Perhaps you can even, you can decide your own security measures, right? We could say, Hey, for transactions, let's say over a hundred thousand dollars, it needs to take a plot sample. You can decide on your own, you know, what, what, what does the security look like? But it's tied to your biology. And you might say, but Felix, look, well, if it's just the fingerprint, then anybody can, you know, let's say, you know, they take my cup and I press a little bit too hard. Somebody, you know, takes my fingerprint and use it to pay. Simple, you know, you can use things as easy as, you know, uh, geofencing where you say, look, it has to be around your proximity where you say, look, somebody can only purchase with your biometrics if they're like, there might even be a tracker inside of you that only you have access to, so to say, but essentially it would have to be in your proximity. Now then you might say, okay, well, so if the wallet you're saying, right? So let's say there's a crypto wallet, it's part of you, in you somewhere in you, wouldn't like mafia people, you know, come after you and try to cut it out of you. Well, again, they, they, there's all kinds of security features that we might have in the future where we say, look, the body still, like the blood still has to be pumping, the heart still has to be going in order for the wallet to work. And if it doesn't work, let's say for example, in the, in the event that you die, and this is one of the problems, that crypto right now hasn't really been solving is wills, right? So for example, it could have a smart contract integrated into it where in the event that you die, that for example, the, the, you know, the, 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 the wallet notices that you know, your heart isn't beating anymore, that it would actually, for example, within let's say three months, transfer the funds to your beneficiary wallets, like your kids, your wife, your secret girlfriend, whatever it is, you know? And that way you could automate a lot of these processes. And that way you can take all these gory thoughts that you might be having of a future mafia that goes around cutting Bitcoin wallets out of people's you know, bodies. That's gonna be gone. And on top of that, you can have so many exciting examples where we have the neural interface, like AR connecting with our personal finance. It makes it so much more tangible, so much more comfortable, simple to use and personal really. Where you know I can see you know, with the overlay, okay, well, you know, what are my balances at? What are my recent transaction? When I pay for something, I can approve it. And perhaps, you know, when I say, you know, I'm going to sleep, I don't want to get hacked like I was recently hacked. You know what? I can maybe flip a switch and say like, you know what? We're going on cold storage mode where none of my bank accounts can be charged. None of my, that's a bank accounts. None of my wallets can be charged um, or be approved where then I have to reactivate it. And so the real future, I think, because when we talk about finance and banking, it's about exchanging value. And what we're tackling right now is both comfort and simplicity as well as security. And I think the best way to tackle that would be to really integrate it into our biology. And one example, funny example you know, from pop culture, if you've ever seen the movie In Time, um, where you know the individuals have their little, little, in the movie, time is the currency. And on their arms, they can see how much time, how much currency they have left. And when they pay for it, you know, they go over it, you know, they pay with it. And the same way, like if they exchange it, you know, they, they basically hold their hands and turn it and, you know, people can transfer money that way. So I think we can go a similar route, not like the movie, but the idea is to make the financial aspect a lot more tangible, to make it a lot more uh, simple, so to say, where it really goes along with our day-to-day -to -day, day -to -day interaction. So we don't have, you know, old ladies going through their wallets, you know, at Walmart trying to find the right pennies, but much rather we can all just go through, scan our fingers, accept it. And in fact, biometrics is the highest level of security. That's what countries use at borders. So wouldn't it make sense applying that to our personal finances instead of having our hundred plastic card going through our wallet? And then when we apply, for example, whether it's for credit cards, for loans, whatever it is, when we apply to those, of course, with the social security number, which I think in the future will be replaced, you know, with personal identity crypto uh, codes, like Civic's working on, for example, that when we have that, you know, it, we don't get a card in the mail, but much rather it gets added to our account. So we see, okay, well, you know, when I'm about to check out and I'm about to scan my finger, I can select which account do I want it to come from. So a lot of that is really 
amazing to me. I think in, again, in this video is a lot more utopian than dystopian, but I think there's many ways where we can find ways to make it dystopian. But I think to every dystopia, there's a solution that can turn it into a thriving future. So guys, with both the sh shift of us moving towards cryptocurrencies, moving towards decentralization and creating more autonomy of how we use money, I think the final step to really implement cryptocurrencies will be to combine it with AR and to combine it you know, with our human biology and biometrics to both increase the, the security, but more importantly also to simply make it usable to make it, you know, to give it a proper UI, UX. The user experience is really what matters here because right now a lot of, you know, crypto, you know, basically sending crypto is very clunky. It's really foreign to a lot of people. It's very techy. But if we can make it seem seamless, where it is as simple as, you know, paying for a Starbucks coffee with the scanning of your finger, you know, now we're talking about a future that, you know, is actually tangible. And you might even make it simple where in the future, maybe you don't even need the finger for small transactions but your mere presence, you know, you get pinged with a transaction, you can approve it. So there's many different ways we can take it, but the bottom line is I think we're going to go meaningless, where we no longer need papers, we no longer need plastic, we no longer need gold, but much rather Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, any of them can serve as a simple mutually agreed upon system of value that doesn't need all the clunkiness that we had in the past. So that, that autonomy combined with the decentralization will make it something really powerful where finance will truly be redefined for generations. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.